A lot of people now are waiting to see what's going to happen with these rising rates and supply issues and demand issues and the recession and the war and all these things. But if you're if you have a 20 year plan for for real estate, you know, I mean, this is just a, a, a kind of like a drop in the bucket, so to speak, in terms of the time you have to recover and, and grow, grow equity and all that kind of stuff, fun stuff. So real estate is a long term game. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, also your host for Raising Private Money. And I'm so excited that you are joining us here on the show today because today I've got an amazing guest that has raised $20 million of private money for his clients. He's raised private money and does raise private money for real estate investors that are looking to fund their deals. Well, my guest has got a very, very interesting background all the way back to a very young age in elementary school. He started trading Pokemon cards. So he was like, came out of the womb as a sales guy, you know. And then when he got into high school, he was selling all kinds of stuff, such as backpacks and hair straighteners and dog tags. I mean, you name it. And then he actually started at such a young age, started investing in mutual funds, uh, you know, to get his investing skills honed. Well, then he goes on to university and he's, you know, getting all kinds of other kinds of experience. Well, when he was only 19 years old, he started investing in his first real estate, a pre-construction condo deal with zero help from his immigrant parents. So he started this real estate investing thing all the way back to 19 years old. And how did he do it? He used this strategy called using a flexible deposit payment plan and actually part of his student loan to invest in real estate. So talk about being creative out of the box. And again, he's got millions of dollars in experience in getting private money to fund real estate deals for his clients. Well, don't go anywhere because in just a moment, when we come back, you're going to meet my guest, Matthew Ablican. Well, Matthew, I've been raising private money myself all the way back to 2009. Like yourself, I've raised millions of dollars in private money for my own real estate investing deals. Uh, you've raised $20 million, millions and millions of private money for your clients. One of the first questions that I get, particularly from new real estate investors, is where do you find these private lenders? Who are they? What does a private lender look like? How do you find these private lenders? So first of all, thanks for having me, Jay. And that trailer is awesome. That's that's a great trailer you have for your show. So I Thank love you. it. Kudos to you. Um, so it was easy for me to really get into the private business because the private uh, mortgage brokerage we worked with when we got licensed in mortgages was already doing that. So they were able to kind of show me the ropes, get me started and kind of work on, you know, what it takes to launch a MIC because eventually I want, I want to become a private lender. And the reason being is to answer one of your questions is a lot of those people are typically the people that I work with are liquid. They have a, a good chunk of change, a good chunk of savings. They're savvy investors, usually the ones that I work with, and they already know kind of what to look for in a good deal. And their biggest problem is finding the deal. So they'll work with different kinds of people like myself who will have the deals as a broker, you know, kind of coming in consistently so that I could place it with them to obtain private funds. So really working with that first mortgage brokerage as a mortgage agent and then later broker, they taught me the ropes, taught me how to, you know, 
even spot a good deal from the private lending side because from a real estate perspective, our core pillar is real estate. You know, looking at a deal on the real estate side is very different from looking at a deal from a lending perspective. So we approach all deals from a lending perspective. We package it before it goes to the investor, and then the investor kind of has all the information already up front. So all they're doing is saying yes or no, and uh, that kind of it leads to our success. I got you. So when you started brokering these deals and matching up private lenders and private money to a real estate investor, you know, having a deal, um, would you say the the bank or the list of private lenders was already there at the brokerage uh, when you actually started getting acclimated to it yourself? No, no. So if we wanted to lend money uh, privately at that brokerage, we typically had to work with their their own in-house financing. Usually it was a family relative of theirs or something like that. So we'd have to work with them. We didn't have that much flexibility. Um, the only time I was able to to do that outside of that brokerage was if it was my money. So my first deal was actually my money. It was about $9,000. It wasn't much. But uh, yeah, some people go to private lenders for 9000 Some people go to private lenders for $10 million. So and, and anywhere in between. So that was my first deal. But what they taught me was how to approach a lender, how to package a deal, how to look, what to look for in a good deal, red flags, things like that. Well, let's talk about that, Matthew. Uh, real estate investors are all the time asking me, well, how do I approach a lender? So how does your conversation start and how do you approach a private lender? So really, I actually, the first question I asked them is what are they looking for in a partnership, in a relationship with a broker? Because automatically, if you have your broker license, there's that idea that, you know, you want to get a commission for what it is that you're doing. You're putting the deal together. So usually brokers will ask them, what's in it for me? What should I, why should I bring a deal to you? But I feel that if you ask them the reverse and say, what are you looking for in a good broker? Um, I've got some really good positive feedback from doing that with private lenders. And then I start you know, asking them what their appetite is. What ballpark, what, what do they like to play in? So some lenders want to play in just single family housing in, um, in where we are, the greater Toronto area. Some people will play in the condo space. Some people will play in the construction space. So everybody's different. So you need to ask them what their niche is. Talk to them a little bit about your brand, you know, how long you've been doing it, speak to your credibility a little bit. And it's always easier if you have somebody that can make that introduction for you, whether that's another real estate agent, another mortgage broker, um, another investor who maybe their appetite, it doesn't really pertain to that deal. You, they don't want to do that deal that you're giving them, but they'll refer you to somebody they know who might. So different different things like that that you can you can use and do to uh, contact those lenders and, and reach them. I personally got started by doing the deal myself. And then my real estate clients who I saw were interested always in investing in real estate, but may not have the money to, let's say, buy another property, but they had $200,000 lying around or $300,000 lying around, then we would put them into, into a private deal. So I started tapping into my network as a real estate broker. So when you start talking with someone uh, as a private lender and you're asking them that question, you know, what kind of deals are they interested in? You know, multifamily condos, single family, pre-construction, new build, et cetera. Let's back up from there. Where do these people come from? I mean, how, how does it even happen that you're having that quest, that conversation with them and asking them those questions? So those are people usually that actually contact us. So at this level, people are starting to contact us. Uh, I got an email today from a lender, which, um, you know, maybe during COVID, I wasn't seeing too many private deals uh, early on April, May 2020. So I was starting to unsubscribe from all of this solicitation that I was getting. But now I'm getting a lot of emails from lenders saying that they're, you know, this is their appetite, their their new rates and their new loan to values and, and things like that. So People will reach out to you if you're in the industry. That's why it's important, I think, to have your uh, mortgage agent license, your mortgage broker license, and they'll reach out to you in the industry. Also, um, we're part of two different organizations here, Mortgage Professionals Canada and, Can and Canadian Mortgage Professionals. There's a few other ones as well, but those are the two main ones. And they issue magazines that you can find all kinds of information on these different lenders, these different private lenders that you can contact. 
we also use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great resource as well. You could Google in your area who's a private lender and then just connect with them. Everything is at the is at your fingertips. So nowadays, I was I was actually I'm I'm dumbfounded by I don't know if you've heard of Chat GPT. I wrote 20 blog articles in the span of 35 minutes today with with titles on different real estate topics. So everything's at your fingertips now. I think it's a lot easier now than than when I was first starting out. Well, and you know that is a um, you just you just you just dropped a really really huge nugget, very very valuable that I want our listeners not to miss. And that is, you can uh, you said Google LinkedIn. You can search LinkedIn looking for private lenders. Let's unpack that just a little bit. How do you do that? Would you say that you go into your LinkedIn account? Uh, you know, you're a member of LinkedIn, and you go into your LinkedIn account. How do you search for private lenders? Exactly, what do you do? There's a few ways you could do it. So. If you already know of some people in the industry and you connect with them on LinkedIn, typically under the suggested section of their profile, it'll give suggestions on who you can also connect with that are in the similar industry as they are. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is if you know the company name, so you you search it up on Google, like you start naming private lenders in Ontario, for example, and it gives you a list, then you could just type the name of the company in LinkedIn and then anyone who's employed there. Uh, will will pop up. So usually people employed at these kinds of companies will want that in their in their uh, biography. So it, it'll be there. So uh, that's another way you can do it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other way. Another another thing you could do is not only on LinkedIn but also on their social media. So if you connect with these different kinds of social media accounts, usually it's somebody in house that's managing it for them. So that's um, that's another way that you could connect with them on on Instagram, for example. Awesome. Those are great nuggets right there, Matthew. In addition to that, I've got a free gift. Uh, it's a private money guide. And um, I didn't have chat GPT available <laughs> to help me write it. Um, too bad I didn't have that. I actually wrote this out of my brain and experience. But if you are a real estate investor looking for private money, I've got a brand new private money guide I want to give you for free. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket your real estate business, and help you build credible wealth. If you're looking for private money and you never want to miss out on a deal for not having the funding and you want to raise the money yourself, um, this guide will get you there. You can download it for free at jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Download that for free, jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. And in addition to that, you can just connect with Matthew here, my guest, and he can plug you into funding as well. So Matthew, uh, your website is www.millennialschoice.com. That's www.millennials, M as in mother, I-L-L-E-N-N-I-A-I-L-S, millennialschoice.com uh, to connect with Matthew. Matthew, how would you describe your ideal client or clients? What type of people are you looking to connect with? So I'm looking for a number of different things. Num number one is I'm looking for somebody who kind of puts the emotion aside in, in this business and just looks at it logically from a numbers perspective. Typically, that's a business owner, someone who's self-employed. They get it. They can read the numbers. And then I'm also looking for people who, as long as they're getting good deals, you know, they're loyal, they, they want to do business and develop a relationship uh, with the broker, with that person, because at the end of the day, loyalty is a big thing in this business. Uh, you work hard to get your relationships, you work hard to put deals together. Um, and at the end of the day, sometimes there isn't a paycheck. So you want to make sure that you're looking for, for people who are loyal, who respect you, who respect what you're doing, respect the fact that you're making the money at the end of the day. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm also looking for transparent people, honest people. So a lot of the people that we work with now are builders and developers that have made a lot of money. They still do building and real, and real estate and construction, but they also have a chunk of change that's set aside that they'll dabble into private mortgages on. So I'm looking for people who, who understand it, kind of a savvier investor, savvier business owner. Those are the types of clients I'm looking for. 
Matthew, you've got a lot of experience. You started in, in real estate. I mean, <laughs> that pre-construction deal all the way back to 19 years old uh, when you were in uh, college. Um, but before we went live on the show, you were telling me about this deal. Uh, I think uh, the raise was around $2 million. Uh, the story sounded really, really interesting, but we really didn't have time to get into it. And I said, well, Matthew, let's just save that for while we're live here on the show. Yeah. So Matthew, how about unpack that story and and tell us about it and lessons learned that uh, our listeners can use. So it was a Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. My wife and I went to um, a particular town here in, in Ontario known as Barrie, Ontario. We were looking at a project that we were working on. We were listing some units for sale there in the building. And we decided to stay in that town uh, for dinner. We had uh, we went to a bar, a pub, and then we had some dinner. And I got a phone call from a builder of mine who said that they needed $2 million in order to close on another financing deal on one of their projects in uh, another city. And they needed $2 million of liquid assets that were unencumbered so that they can the lender can feel confident in advancing them the funds to close this other deal. And they needed it by Tuesday afternoon so that the funds would clear by Friday afternoon, which was the deadline they had to meet this condition. And when they called me Sunday afternoon, I'm not really going to be going to a lender, uh, you know, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. It's, it's going to be, first of all, hard to get a hold of them. It's not, it's not impossible, but it's going to be hard and, and nothing's going to be really be accomplished. So we, we finished dinner. We went back, we got back home. It was about 45 minutes later. And I put everything together. So at least I worked on the deal when we got home. I put everything together. Monday, I started making the phone calls. Long story short, there was one lender who could do it and deliver it in two days. It really was probably more like a day, day and a half. Um, but they were able to do the deal. They closed it. And you know, just the whole process of packaging the deal is so important because this was a deal that Another broker kind of dropped the ball on. That's why it came to me last minute. I'm, I'm not known as that guy that, you know, has access to, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to uh, put together for a construction deal. Now, this broker kind of couldn't really think outside of the box or get creative. So the deal flopped. Nobody wanted to touch it. Nobody wanted to go near construction simply because of the, the rising interest rates and so much volatility in our markets. And when we were able to do the deal, we packaged it not as a construction deal, straight equity deal on a couple, three residential properties that the builders owned. And we secured the, the two million bucks across those residential properties for 90 days. They were able to close on the other deal. And then we were able to refinance the two million out with another lender 90 days later. That's amazing, uh, Matthew, to be able to fund a deal, turn it around in, you know, 48 business hours with first just hearing about it on a Sunday. Yeah. I would imagine that part of that magic is really the relationships and connections that you already have in place. It's all that it's, it's literally all that no one else would, would even look at a deal like that if it was, uh, you know, short notice and, and over a million bucks, it's typically not something any lender wants to do, but it, there was, there was a reason for it. Everything made sense. Uh, there was a lot of trust. These these were people that I could put the lender and the, the borrower in the room together. And that happened at one point. So we were able to do that. So it's always about your relationships. Uh, you're able to help these people close. Now, as a now as a business, uh, a business person who's who's, you know, trying to build even better relationships and stronger relationships, knowing what I knew about this borrower being in a jam. And, you know, I wasn't their first person that they thought of for this type of transaction, but I've I have a very strong relationship with them for other reasons. Um, I actually didn't even, you know, hit them over the head with a commission. I didn't do anything like that. I, I covered some costs and they were so grateful that they gifted me with a couple of uh, storage lockers in their building is worth about 9,000 bucks. So they gifted me a couple of those and, you know, we've done more business since then because of that. So they, they never forget that moment. So maybe you as a, agent or broker, or someone doing these types of deals. I'm not telling you how to do your business, but I basically won those people over in a, in a big, big way. Not only did I deliver, but I didn't take advantage of them. And that's, I think, super important these days. Well, when it comes to relationships, the long term is always more important than the short term, right? Yeah. 
And based on the way, Matthew, that you took care of them, my best guess is you've got a client for life. Yes. There's one question, Matthew, before the show started that you asked me to be sure and ask you live on the show. So I'm going to ask you right here live on the show, what's the one thing that a lot of real estate investors are doing wrong, or at least are thinking about it the wrong way when it comes to real estate investing? There's a lot of there's a lot of things that they're thinking about, but that that's wrong in the way that they're thinking about it. But I think one of the the biggest things that we're seeing now is that a lot of people are treating they're not treating it like a business. They're kind of treating it as a as a passive investment, and and they don't really look at it as a business. Our tax revenue agencies look at it as a business. They look at it as if you're buying a property and renting it out, you're generating income, business income through the form of rent rent. And then, you know, you're paying expenses in the form of property taxes, maintenance fees, interest on your mortgage and all kinds of other things, real estate commissions, lawyer fees, etc. So you as an investor need to really treat this as a business and know that there will be ups and downs and hard times and and good times and all that, all that fun stuff. So it's just a lot of people are looking at it not from a business angle and more of a passive opportunity angle. And it's not. It's a, it's a full-time business. That's why as you scale, you have to hire property management and hire other professionals to help you because it's, it's just the natural process of this business. So treat it as a business and take it seriously. Surround yourself with the right people. And, um, you know, with that long term, that's the that's the, the way to go about it. A lot of people now are waiting to see what's going to happen with these rising rates and supply issues and demand issues and the recession and the war and all these things. But if you're if you have a 20 year plan for for real estate, you know, I mean, this is just a, a, a kind of like a drop in the bucket, so to speak, in terms of the time you have to recover and, and grow, grow equity and all that kind of stuff, fun stuff. So real estate is a long term game. That's for sure. I'm visiting with Matthew Ablicon. His business, uh, his website is www.millennialschoice. Dot com. And one more time, Matthew, tell the audience your client and who you like to connect with. So I'm looking for people who are business owners, savvy investors. Uh, they look at things from a logical perspective using numbers and stats and somebody who kind of they've already dabbled in some deals and they want to you know invest in a good opportunity, something that's safe, not too risky, but still profitable. That's who I'm looking for. Awesome. Matthew, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Thanks for having me, Jay. I, I hope to be back on soon. Absolutely. God bless you. There you have it, my friend. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And I need your help in sharing this episode. If you found this episode valuable and you'd like to share it with some other of your friends, family, and colleagues, be sure to share. And if you happen to be listening on iTunes, be sure to follow this show. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, like and share and click that bell so you don't miss out. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here on the next Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconner.com slash moneyguide. That's J-C-O-N-N-E-R dot com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jake.